Welcome to the Beauty Pro Wellness Podcast, the podcast that mixes wellness with personal development tips and info specifically for beauty industry professionals. I'm your host, Abby O'Sullivan, a longtime esthetician and lash artist turned wellness coach. With burnout and health issues on the rise amongst my beauty pro friends, I know we need a space to come together to learn, support each other, and get the push you need to take care of your health. Together, we'll dive into topics like mobility training for a less achy body, managing stress in the chaos of running a business and handling clients, setting up your self-care routines, and so much more. You deserve to feel as good as your clients do when they leave you. Let's make time for you, starting with this podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to another episode of the Beauty Pro Wellness Podcast. Today's conversation is so good. It's so expansive. Breath work is something that I've been really curious about. If you're curious about it too, as a form of self-care, as a form of managing stress and coming back to your body, reconnecting to yourself, tune into this episode. My guest today is Britley Williams, and she is a trauma-informed coach, breathwork facilitator, somatic healer, and empowerment coach. She is going to fill your ears with good energy, and she vulnerably shares her story of having that life that looks perfect on the outside, but things are falling apart on the inside. I I found the story so relatable because what happens when we get caught up in the grind and like trying to be successful and trying to have all these things and trying to do all the things and be all the things to everyone is we get so disconnected from ourselves and we can end up in really just disconnected, but like really frazzled, fried, burned out state. We don't even know who we are. She is sharing her journey through that. And she's also sharing a lot of info about breath work. She talks about the sequence that we did. You can connect with her on Instagram. I'm going to drop her links in the show notes. She also has a program open right now. I think she has very limited spots left. So if you're listening to this, you listen to the whole episode and you're like, I gotta, I gotta work with this woman, go find her on Instagram, connect with her. She is such a light. And with that, enjoy the episode. Welcome, Britley. Welcome to the podcast. It is so amazing to have you here. Mm, thank you, my love. It's amazing to be here. I'm honored to have this beautiful conversation with you today. Yay. Yes, I can't wait for it. And just want to add for the listeners that we just did some breath work together. Feels so chill now. Feels so good. What a lovely energy reset. And that is a lot about what we're going to talk. That's a lot of what we're going to talk about today. But first, I know you just had like a big life transition. You just moved back to Austin. Mm-hmm. We're going right into it. Yeah, we're going right into it. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Like, no time. <laughs> tell me about your shout outs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, a big life trans- transition. Um, a roller coaster ride. I am from Austin. I lived here for 16 years, I guess 18. I always say 16. I lived here for 18 years. And then um, in 2020, when the world went crazy on us, I packed up a Subaru Crosstrek and I moved across the country to Denver where I had never been, didn't know anybody to really just allow myself to rediscover who am I, who is Brittany. Um, I'm sure we'll get into my story, but I lived, you know, in a chronic state of disconnect, really high achiever, but really chronically disconnected from myself, my intuition. And so moving back to Austin has been both expansive and exciting and also really intimidating and scary. You know, there's a lot of parts of me here that were traumatized and there's a lot of memory and history Mm -hmm. and old patterns and parts of me that are reflecting back to me in many of the places and spaces that that I go to today. So it's been a huge transition. And again, I'm sure we'll get into all of this, but I left a really beautiful relationship behind. I rehomed my puppy, um, changed some things in my career. So everything is in a huge transition phase. And I'm really, really being asked to soften and to surrender into the season that I'm in for sure. Yeah. Wow. Which is hard too. I mean, yeah. I don't know about hard, but it just has its challenges and yeah, you just mm-hmm. kind of have to like ride the wave where you're mm-hmm. trying to fight the current. <laughs> right. Oh, a hundred percent. My gosh. And yes, we're definitely going to dive into some of this and like what we, when we chatted before we were like mutually, we're mutually passionate about this, the mind body connection and how we can use different modalities 
to help us connect back to ourselves and, and better manage our health and life. <laughs> and like, like, especially like what you're going through now, like all those transitions and even the day-to-day -day stuff. So what I want to know now is like, what, what brought you here? How did Britley get here? And what, what, what were you like before, before, like when shit was hitting the fan and you were like, it's got to change what was mm -hmm. going on then? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we'll just go there. As I mentioned, mm -hmm. I was a realtor here in Austin for seven years. And then I started to couple that with pharmaceutical sales. So two really, really demanding full-time careers that I was balancing simultaneously, but I wasn't really balancing, right? I was in like chronic overdrive, stress, disconnect, chasing money, chasing material things. And I really did live the American dream. I had the boyfriend and the beautiful house and the dog and, you know, six to seven figures coming in mm -hmm. residually as a 24 year old. So really on the outside looking in, I was the definition of success. Now, how that looked on the inside was completely different. I was very, very unsettled in my body. I was very disconnected. I was at the height of an eating disorder because I had lived this life that was so in overdrive that I overrode my nervous system and intuition all along the way. Mm -hmm. And I pushed through, I didn't allow myself to fill. I suppressed a lot. I was a people pleaser. I was just really, really outside of myself and my soul and the pacing of the universe, just constantly pressing on the gas and never really allowing myself to slow down. So at the ripe age of 23, I had this really big epiphany. I was like, I am so unhappy. I go to bed every night replaying in my head, everything I ate the night before and everything I have to do to sacrifice the next day to make up for it. And on top of that, I feel all this pressure in every area of my body, whether my partner's the right one, whether I'm going to succeed in this career field and really just seeking validation everywhere else other than mm -hmm. within myself. Right. Mm -hmm. And it got so loud. It got to a breaking point where I needed help. And the first thing to do was to admit that I had a problem which at the time, and this is no rag on my partner because this is just the state and space he was in. He was a great partner. But when I brought to him that I had an eating disorder, I'll never forget. He was like, oh, babe, well, can't you just like eat a little bit less? <laughs> and I had just like woke up all this courage, right? Bless. And <laughs> Bless his heart mm. to come and share this really hard thing. And then that's when I was like, okay, I have to do this alone. And that's limiting belief because we don't have to do it alone, right? But in this time, yeah. space, I was like, I'm going all in on myself. I can do this. No one can help me. And in a way that served me because it really motivated me to go inward in spaces and places that I'd never been before. It's really hard to sit with your body when you don't love yourself and your body, right? Yeah, yeah. So I started slowly as most people do in cognitive behavioral therapy. And I was like the therapist dream because I was like, hi, my name's Burley Williams. I have an avoidant <laughs> attachment. My dad's an addict and this is why I am the way I am. And it reached down to my parent, <laughs> my generational trauma. And then like all the therapists I was meeting with were like, I don't really see what I'm here to do. Like, it sounds like you kind of know everything and have all the awarenesses. And I'm like, why am I paying you? Right. And I got kind of frustrated because I did. I, I was so aware of why I was seeking validation outside myself and that I had identification in my physical body rather than in my spiritual self and my purpose and all of these things. So that's when I started to seek out somatic therapy because I thought there has to be something more than mm -hmm. the cognitive song and the awarenesses. Like how do we actually integrate that into the body? Okay. Started looking into somatics, joined a somatic coaching group cohort, which at the time I had no idea what that means. Like many of you are probably like a what, yeah. which is a safe space where we, where we really do body-based modalities. So meditation, sound healing, um, breath work, all of these tapping things that use the body to integrate new states of being. So we go beyond that kind of cognitive pillar and into our emotional bodies. Mm -hmm. About six months into that, I woke up and I realized that I didn't want to live this way anymore. And it wasn't actually just me that had the problem. It was that my system was so unhappy in the state and space that it was in. So which I was like chaos or yeah, chaos, disconnect. Mm -hmm. and, and truthfully, I was in the wrong relationship and it was not an unhealthy relationship. It just wasn't my relationship. He wasn't my person. I was trying to force fit all these puzzle pieces to, to work mm -hmm. that weren't ever meant to be put together in the first place. And I was holding it together with all of my might. And I finally just let it fall away. Right. Yeah. Wow. And I mm -hmm. bought a Subaru, packed it up, drove to Denver and didn't know where I was going, but I was <laughs> liberated. <Yeah. laughs> like I'm free. <laughs> it was so freeing. And you know, my mom was like, Oh my God, I'll see you in two months when you turn around and 
I'm very worried for you. And the ex was like, I don't think you're losing it. And all my friends were very concerned about my health, but deep yeah. inside of me, I knew that I had outgrown my container. And the only way for me to grow is to step into a new one. Mm-hmm. So I moved to Denver mm. and I became a student for two. I really like retired for two years. I became a student of this work. I got certified in trauma-informed modalities and breath work. And I took a multitude of courses, had coaches, had people that were really just pouring into me and my system, learning how to regulate myself and come back to this beautiful intuition, this beautiful inner knowing, this beautiful inner wisdom that we overpass and override. I ended up healing my eating disorder completely Mm -hmm. and being in this state and space and then coming out of that, of course, thinking I have to share this with everybody Mm -hmm. who will listen everybody, whether you have a story similar to mine or completely different, learning how to come home and be in a state and space where you are in flow and you feel at peace and you feel that bliss and you can access your intuition and drive and make decisions from there is such a liberating, beautiful space to be in. Mm -hmm. And, And let me preface that I'm not perfect, but but doing the work and getting myself uncomfortable over and over and over again, investing in myself, taking all of these steps and action items to really get to know my shadows and the parts of me that I avoided for years, right? Like for mm-hmm. decades, I just mm-hmm. ignored them and refused to look at them and in the face. And here I am today holding all of it in its duality without such a heavy charge. And it's so beautiful and liberating. And I just want everyone to know how available it is to them. And there's nothing really outside of themselves other than maybe mentorship and a roadmap that they need to feel this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. And I thought of so many things along the way, but sometimes they leave my mind too quickly. What what I do want to say first is thank you so much for sharing that, that part of your story, because I'm sure like, well, I, I will speak for myself in that sharing some of the like dark, like let's say darker stuff, like stuff I'm personally more like ashamed or have hidden away. That feels like oof at first. It feels kind of like uncomfortable and icky at first. Um, and then mm-hmm. as you start to talk about it more, you you kind of get used to <laughs> being able to share about it. But I know that it's it's not always easy for people who are experiencing it or for people to talk about it. And I think there's a lot of relatable, um, parts to your story. There's a lot of people who are, I'm sure going through very similar things, especially in a culture where we are, it's like hustle and do and do and do and go and go and go. And you've got to have this and you've got to be this and for everyone and, and everything all the time. And then you just get to a point where you're just like, who, who am I though? And like, what do I want? Like, what do I really want? Like what's been what's been forced, what's been like kind of pushed down my throat, like of what I should have and what I should want versus what do I actually want? And I think it, it kind of, it kind of sounds like you were able to get to that space where you got to discover, like you said, you shed the container and you got to discover someone new within yourself too. And like, get to know yourself more. Yeah, absolutely. And as far as sharing and vulnerability of the spaces and the shadows that we've been in, sure, it's uncomfortable, but shame grows, Mm -hmm. grows and grows and grows in the absence of truth, right? In the absence of reflection and shining a light on it. So we become like literal shame slayers, Mm -hmm. show up about the things that we're shameful about and voice them out loud. We literally take the power and the charge away. And then we all begin to neutralize and understand that we're all keeping the same secrets and we're all, all in the same space. Yeah. So for me, the most freeing thing in the world that I can do is show up in my mess, yeah, not at my best, yeah, right? And I remember specifically when I was leaving Colorado, one friend that I wasn't super close to, but I was actually going to church with one last Sunday was shocked when I was telling her, I'm moving to Denver, I'm uprooting, I'm leaving the house, the dog, the job. She was like, okay, hold on. I have prayed for your life. Literally, you are in my prayers. I have been praying for your life. And it was in that moment that I was like, never again, never, ever, ever, ever again. Will I mislead someone to such a degree in which they are idolizing a life that is so highlighted and so fake because Mm -hmm. underlying was so miserable. I will never do it again. I will never do it. Mm -hmm. And I just promised myself in that moment. And I've been trying my best to show up real and authentic ever since, because what a pressure on me. Yeah on everybody when we have to show up in a highlight reel and idolize somebody else's life of our own. I want to be no contributor of that, <laughs> like ever. Yes. That is such a powerful point. 
Oh my gosh. Yeah. I thank you. That was great. That's such a good point. And there's something so powerful about like you touched on it. It's so for us to be able to use our voice and to share it is, it's very freeing because a lot of that, like I noticed when I was going through deeper work is that I just never even said it out loud. Like I wasn't even admitting it to myself out loud because even that was like so uncomfortable. But as soon as I started to, I went through, um, like a somatic coaching type group as well. And I shared a lot of personal stuff. <laughs> like I'd be crying on boxer notes and I'd be like, well, I would not normally do this with people. But then you ha- you're like, that's released out there. And you realize that there are people there to hold you. And it is, it, it can be, I mean, choose wisely who you're sharing with, but like, cause not everyone receives as well, but that's, you know, then we just have to deal with that. Um, but having people to like hold you and support you in that space. I mean, that's, I think where, where coaching really does or therapy or whatever modality like does really come in handy. Um, because then you're able to like feel safe and, and regulate like beyond that. Um, but yeah, anyway, (laughs) that was so lovely. (laughs) I'm like, okay, back to (laughs) like, what tangent do I want to go off on now? Um, (laughs) And I also think that, you know, this, this like burnout is a very generic, um, broad topic, but like it's experienced so many different ways and it can show up in so many different ways. So what do you, um, what do you love about practicing breath work and helping to manage stress and, and like to the point where it's, where it doesn't get so bad that we like do feel the need to uproot or, you know, change our whole life or like run away or whatever, like, but so that we can actually just deal with things in a, I don't know, healthier way. Mm-hmm. Burnout essentially is just the overriding of our nervous system over and over and over again, right? Like diminishing our needs, not paying attention to what our body is trying to indicate to us and tell us when it needs to slow down, when it needs rest, when it needs nurturing when an emotion needs to be fully processed. So the more that we just push the needle forward in the name of productivity is like Mm -hmm. the most detrimental things we can do to our body, our health, all the things, right. And we end up burning out. So I lived there. I know exactly what that looks like. I can feel it in my bones and my cells. If you ask me to go there right now today and how I have alleviated that and transitioned that and how I actually have, I don't think I've been in burnout for like two and a half years because I'd never let my system go so unnoticed. Mm -hmm. I listen to myself and that's a hard muscle, right? The mind and body connection is something that we are not taught. We are not advocated for. We certainly are not talking about online, right? In fact, when you're scrolling and your mind goes up into robotic mode and you're disconnected from your body and you're taking in all this information, there's no connection at all. So we aren't given that many opportunities aside from some yoga practices and obviously breath work and things like that, that really allow us to tune into our bodies. So how do we start? I think is the question you're asking, right? Like, how do we start? Yeah. Well, for me, it was not meditation because I was like, if I sit down to meditate, all the thoughts will swarm and get to my brain and then I'll become overwhelmed and then I'll criticize myself for not being able to meditate. So I knew that that (laughs) wasn't the tool for me. Yeah. Now I love it. I can sit for two hours. (laughs) But at the time I was like, why would I do that to myself when I don't, you know, I'm just trying to advocate for myself right now. I don't want to put myself in a situation where meditation doesn't feel good. So it was breath work. It was just practicing 10 minutes of breath work a day. I have an app that I can share out to you guys. And it was really just like about finding my breath, bringing my awareness back into my breath, because if I have something to actively kind of think on, it was easier for me to drop into the body, right? Mm -hmm. Breath work is under the same umbrella of meditation, but it's a more active practice. So you're actively doing something and it's allowing yourself to really bring the awareness into the breath as it enters and leaves the body. And even that alone is going to create a connection to your body, your mind Mm -hmm. and your body. So we're going to shorten that gap. That was my first exercise and really just getting to know the body, right? The second thing was like silly things like putting on lotion and not just like putting on lotion and slathering it all over my body, like (laughs) running out of the room with wet hair, like putting on lotion, like on my arms and on my body and like just noticing the sensation of what it feels like to, to touch myself, especially as a female, right? Like my legs Mm -hmm. and the parts that I didn't love, Love like bringing Mm -hmm. extra love and awareness into my stomach, into my arms. Like that intentional touch. 
Totally. It doesn't mm-hmm. have to be all these crazy practices and you don't have mm-hmm. to sit in meditation for three hours. It can be like you connecting, you asking yourself before you dive into the box of Oreos, like what would be really nourishing right now? What do I need? What do I want? Like taking the time to ask your body, something that I've been doing and practicing is every morning before I wake up, before, excuse me, before I touch my phone, the very first thing I do is touch my body. I rub her all over and right now I'm single. So I, I do it in a way that is like super self-nourishing, but also in a way that I want to show somebody one day to wake me up softly. Slowly, yeah, girl. Slowly, I sensual, like that too. Right? Yeah. And there's something I'm into so it. powerful about showing my body how it, she's more important than anything, literally mm-hmm. anything. And what she needs in, for me for the day is going to take precedence over everything scheduled. There's like such an intimacy there. So really just like slowing down breathing into the body, breathing into the belly, taking a moment, giving yourself a big ice glass of water, but then like feeling yourself drinking it, feeling it, opening your organs, like just starting to become consciously aware of this beautiful vessel that we've spent like little to no time in Mm -hmm. throughout our day. It's going to just begin that, that conversation, right? It's like a muscle. It's like, what do you do when you meet somebody? You get to know them. You ask them questions. You take the time, you learn their history. You learn Mm -hmm. what triggers them, what they like, what they don't like. Like you're doing this with your body and with yourself, right? Like, Mm -hmm. what do you need? What do you like? What do you desire? What do you hate? What do you, yeah. how do you want to move? Like, just get curious and playful. And I don't make this detrimental. Like I have to, but like, this is the best coming home to yourself is the best thing you can ever do for yourself. Yes. And it's such a practice. Like it's, it is, it's like being the gym and like doing reps. Like it is a practice because it can, like, there's just days where I realize like, I'm really being harder on myself or whatever. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Stop. Like Mm -hmm. let's reroute. And I work really hard on that because I tend to overthink and I tend to, you know, still have like perfectionist tendencies, like high expectations of myself. Like, oh my gosh, I thought of a pretty decent example um, because I've been a pretty heavy gym rat in my life. Like I love going to the gym, love lifting weights. And in the last couple of years, I've definitely softened in that a little more. Like I still enjoy it. I still get a kick out of it. Um, am I always motivated to go? No, but I do. And I still actually enjoy like going through the motions. I like the feeling of being strong. And I like the feeling of like my muscles. I love that mind body connection that I have built with myself. Um, but I do work from home part of the week too. And some days I'm just like, I don't feel like going over there. Like what would I, what do I feel like doing instead that would still be active but it's not like just picking up weights that I have at home. And so once in a while it's dancing and it's maybe I'll get on YouTube and I've, um, YouTubed like, um, the fitness marshal and I've done some of his dances. I can barely keep up with the choreography, but like whatever. Mm -hmm. And I've also YouTubed, um, some salsa lessons. Oh my gosh. Found some really good ones. That's very tough. And of course it's new. Right. So I'm like, I'm not excellent at this, but I'm having fun. And I'm just there and like, my shorts and my messy hair, messy face and like Mm -hmm. moving my body in a different way. And it still helps that, that energy release and still fills my Mm -hmm. cup. And when I don't take it so seriously, you know, I'm able to just be like, this is fun. And like, I'm moving my body in a different way. I'm still connecting, but without like berating myself for not going to the gym and lifting the weights that day. Like, just how would you like to move? Do you want to do some Mm -hmm. mobility or some stretching or like what would feel good, you know, to your lower back when you've been sitting all day, it's probably not laying flat on it on the couch. I mean, sometimes that happens, but like, <laughs> and we are creative beings, right? Take yourself back, close your eyes. If you must to you as a kid, you're a creative mm-hmm. being, you're making castles and rocks you're creating. So it's like, we weren't made to live in this super hyper-structured world where we go to the gym for 50 minutes a day, we lift the weights, we come home, like we're meant to move and to create and to create momentum. Mm -hmm. And it does take some courage. It does take some courage to, to dance and get familiar again with your own body. And I'll Mm -hmm. tell you one thing, confidence comes after courage, not Mm -hmm. before, Mm -hmm. right? So if you're waiting for the confidence to be able to dance in your skin, it's not going to happen until you place the courage to do so. And then you gain the confidence from there. So you have to go first and Mm -hmm. that's uncomfortable, but what would you prefer to stay stuck inside of a body that you disassociate with and don't know? or to learn and to move and to try to push that edge with yourself alone in your room in a way that you can come back home to yourself. And you said something about moving the energy. And I'd love to talk a little bit about how somatic moves. Does that feel good? Yes, absolutely. Let's go for it. 
I think like, let's just get down to the science, right? Like our body is a filing cabinet to every stored emotion, trauma, memory, habit, belief, thought pattern that lives inside of us. So we don't forget anything, right? And anything like some, a lot of us are like, I don't really remember my childhood. And that's actually a trauma response. That's a protective mechanism, survival strategy, whatever you want to call it for you to actually not relive past traumas. But the truth is, is that you do remember your body keeps score of every single thing that happens to it. So what happens when we start to move our body and even utilize our voice, right? Our voice mm -hmm. is a sound frequency in which Absolutely. moves in and out. So when you mentioned it's hard for me to, to share my shadows, that's a beautiful place to start is just say them out loud. Mm -hmm. Say them out loud yes. to yourself in the mirror. Say them mm -hmm. out loud to yourself on the, in a journal, in a pen, out loud on your voice notes, by yourself, in a room, wherever it feels good to just start to admit to yourself what's going on and what's alive in your body. We have to create the space for our body to be able to liberate these emotions. Mm -hmm. right? Every emotion has a, a process that it must go through in order to complete itself. Many times we feel the emotion, we shove the emotion down and then it gets stopped and stored and stuck. And we're not able to actually fully process that emotion. Mm -hmm. So it's just another emotion that gets stored in the body. And all of a sudden we're like, why is my neck broken? And why is my upper yeah. back? so tight and why do I feel like I can't move and I'm robotic and stressed and yeah it just like emotions it's like it just stacks up I imagine like it's just like stored emotion oh, yeah. stored emotion stored, and then all of a sudden you're like I my body is so tight I can't move and like you might hurt yourself more easily totally. like you're just, just stressed out maybe you can't sleep you feel brain fog and like there's a lot of there's a lot of physiological things happening there mm -hmm. but I fully believe there's it's it's kind of just like that holistic circle of like let's address not just one thing it's not just like oh well I probably just need to go on a diet or I probably just like need to go to the gym or it's it's generally a combination of things and that's what I've personally learned over the course of like all the time that I've been in the gym my my story is more like it wasn't necessarily just about aesthetics. Like there's definitely been those points in my life where it was about aesthetics is why I worked out and all of that, but it was usually a validation and self-worth thing that I was just kind of continually seeking. But once I went back into my, my stress cycles, like my responses, my typical responses without awareness, I wasn't, it was like an on and off cycle again and again, until I really learned about um, the nervous system and just how, like all of our, really, when I got into like personal training, nutrition, coaching, mobility, and then into that coaching program where we really dove into somatics and nervous system regulation. And I was like, oh, well, so many light bulbs went off that I was like, holy shit. Like I, I've, I wish I'd known this like before, but whatever, it's all part of the journey. And so now mm -hmm. it's like, there's so many more tools that we have at our disposal than we even realize. And you're so right. Like it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be overly complicated. We just have to be in, intent on, on doing it and make space for it and, and keep trying and keep like you keep trying different things. Like if meditation isn't like your jam right now, try something else. Like there's no real right way to do this. <laughs> Totally. And there's so much available to you. And we have so much capability to, to take back the power into our own hands. Um, so that's my yeah. tangent. <laughs> I, like it. I, mean, I don't think it's more information we need either. Right. Like, but by the time this episode is up, there will be a plethora of more information than when you started this episode. It's not, we're not deprived of the resources. It's actually an information diet. It's coming home to ourselves. It's asking ourselves. Who are we? What do we need? What do we desire? And you mentioned stress a couple of times when you were speaking and let's just like, even using stress as an example, we externalize stress all the time. We're like, well, stress has to do with my external environment, the traffic, the mm -hmm. crazy, the crazy boss, my messy apartment, my spouse, everything is attributing to my stress, but that's actually not true. Stress mm -hmm. is a direct reflection of what's going on internally. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't like to hear that, but it's like, and <laughs> no. right, the more fear that you put, the more fear that you store and stuck and keep in your body without liberating it, the more terrifying this world is truly mm -hmm. the reflection is you're terrified. The more guilt and shame that is stuck and stored in your body that you have not dealt with, the more tempting this world is there's temptation everywhere. The more stress and override and burnout that you keep in your system, the more stress and stressors you will run into on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. 
And so it's so important that you know and can liberate some of these emotions in the body. And, and keep in mind, like if you're like, oh my gosh, where do I start? This is where you start. You're leaning in, you're listening to this podcast, you're learning the tools, you're learning the verbiage. And guess what you get to practice doing right now when you hang up this phone? Some deep breaths, mm -hmm. feel your heart. Close your eyes, connect to your heart. See if you can actually feel the cells in your body. The ones that meet no resistance, by the way, that wake up every day and do their job without you telling them to, that are in absolute flow and surrender and, and you just trust them, right? Like this body works so hard on your behalf day in and day out. Just give it some love. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's all you have to do. Just, just give, give your body love. some love. Yeah. <laughs> It does. It works so hard for us. It carries us everywhere. And a lot of times we're just kind of dumping on it and into it. Mm -hmm. And it sucks like to take the responsibility sometimes, but it's also very freeing because then you can like, again, okay, well, all right, then I can choose. Yeah. <laughs> I get to choose. It's a very powerful thing to say to yourself. It either scares you or you're like excited or both. I mean, whatever. <laughs> Well, to know that we're the active operators essentially puts us, or maybe initially puts us into the shock of like, oh shit, I have to, <laughs> I'm in control. And then you start to think about it and you're like, oh wait, I'm in control. And it's very empowering. Mm -hmm. You're like, I'm in complete control of my experience, but how do I learn how to then make it for a better experience? Right. Mm -hmm. And it goes a little bit beyond the cognitive thoughts, although those are a great place to start. Like thinking different things will create different chemicals in the body, but then you really have to start getting into a different state. Mm -hmm. So I would always say like changing your thoughts is 20% of it, but changing the way that you feel and changing those neural pathways that we've created in our body and liberating mm -hmm. through some of the trauma and stored stuckness, it's the other 80%. That's what's going to be sustainable. That's when you're going to start to feel like a different human. Mm -hmm. I 110 million percent never been more confident in saying anything out loud. I'm a different human than I was two years ago on a cellular, cellular level. If I would have continued to operate the way that I was about three years ago, I would have run into cancer and all of the things. There's no way I wouldn't have. My body was mm -hmm. on about to shut down on me. Like yeah. at 23 years old, the way that I was treating it was, was not sustainable. I am different on a cellular level. The way that stress enters and leaves and moves through my body looks completely different than it did. Mm -hmm. So that's not because of my thoughts. That's not because I told myself I don't get stressed. It's mm -hmm. because I showed myself how safe I am. Mm -hmm. I showed myself a new way of being and I anchored in a new way of feeling into the body, one that I could return to, one that I could access, one that my body didn't even know was capable of, of creating until I showed it, right? We have to change our state. Mm -hmm. Changing that physiological state. Like there's so many thyroid hormone, like gut, uh, autoimmune conditions, like on the rise, so many people are coming across this. And my first question is just like, well, you have like a pretty high stress lifestyle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and a lot of people do. And I'm not, I'm not even saying that to like patronize them. I'm just like, because I understand I've, I've been through that myself in a totally different way too. So yes. it's just, oh my gosh. Yeah. It, I agree wholeheartedly. Um, so when I was doing like a little bit of Googling about breath work, I don't like to look always up too much because I like for people who are more of an expert to speak on things, but I, I have noticed, um, just in my bit of experience that there are different types of breath work. Like you gave the one that we did a different name than like what I did with you on the, um, self-care space mm -hmm. app. I don't know if I said that right. Yeah. Self-care space. Yep. How many like different kinds of breath work are there? And like, what are your, do you have like go-tos? They, they obviously have like different functions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. So there's more activating and more grounding breath patterns. Of course, there's a plethora. So I can't put a number to how many there mm -hmm. are. And like the one we did today was a combo breath, right? So we started with bliss in and out through the nose. We went into blow in and out through the mouth. And then we did this beautiful halo active breath into the nose, out through the mouth. So I, and my expertise have found beautiful ways to pair an activating and grounding breath work to give you kind of a full body experience. When we came out of it, you were feeling very blissful, mm -hmm. right? Very present, mm -hmm. very dropped into your body. Like there was no, there was really no way for you to get overwhelmed or stressed, like your, yeah. your nervous system is pretty regulated. So, and then of course there's like the transformational breath works, which I do one-on-one -on -one, and those, those require the trauma informed approach because our body goes into a state that we're not used to going into. It's called theta. It's kind of a hypnotic state or a suggestible state where we can actually speak to our subconscious mind, where we can't really get to on a day-to-day -day basis, living in this analytical mind that we spend 98% of our time in. Mm -hmm. Right. So different breath works, different rhythms, different pacing, different patterns are going to create different experiences. Um, 
I'm trying not to totally nerd out on you right now. <laughs> Go for it. I like nerding out. <laughs> but there are, right? Some different patterns are going to create a slightly different experiences. They're going to have a slightly different charge and they're going to create a slightly different ratio of oxygen to carbon dioxide in the body. Mm, yeah, so your body's sense. either going to go into homeostasis or a little bit out of homeostasis and all are really intentional and can be used for really a plethora of purposes. Um, the one that I showed you, which is the bliss breath in and out through the nose. And for the listeners, it just sounds like... I do that every single morning to kind of clear out dreams and stagnant energy from the day before. I find mm-hmm. it that it's really like opening, heart opening for me. And it really drops me into my body and just allows me to be clear. Also energizes me. That's an activating breath as is the blow breath <sighs> in and out through the mouth. So I pair those two together. I start to get into my body and then I'll end with that halo active breath in through the nose and out through the mouth in a beautiful circular motion. So there's no start mm-hmm. or stop. <sighs> which is a grounding breath. So that's going to bring us back into our body, right? We're we're essentially like building up the energy, waking up the cells in our body, kind of moving the energy and allowing it to move where it wants. And then we're bringing back down with the halo active breath, the energy that serves us. And with that exhale, letting go of some of the energy and thoughts and patterns that don't. Mm -hmm. So it's like this really beautiful combo. And also your body knows exactly what it needs, right? So I get into the breath. I don't time myself. I don't put a whole lot of rigidity on the pattern. I let my, my body tell me, and I let the breath do the work. Mm -hmm. And that's a really beautiful way to gain trust for myself too. Of Like, Hey, you go, the mind is on stage all day long. Let's let the body on stage for two minutes in the morning and allow it to move. And just feeling that breath roll in and out through your body, bringing new, fresh oxygen to your mind. If nothing else, just thinking about increasing your, your capacity for the day, right. It's a really beautiful way to think of it. Yeah. Increasing your capacity at the same time, like increasing your capacity to like breathe, like yeah. functionally. <laughs> yeah. What I think about, well, first of all, I love the, the halo breath. I actually, when you say like waves, but I also like visualize that like the ocean, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. how rhythmic that is. And mm-hmm. that's cause I'm sort of, I have a good imagination, kind of a visual person. So like, I love that along with it because like in and of itself, that's relaxing to me. Yeah. Um, but I also think about how shallow uh, we can tend to be breathing like most of the day. I've worked in the beauty industry a long time and been sitting kind of over people. Mm-hmm. And it's very easy to just like shallow chest breathe all day. Mm-hmm. And I also think that that contributes to some of the tension that we have in our upper bodies because it's just like, and, and when they're concentrating, like lash artists specifically, like when you're concentrating, you're kind of just like holding yourself, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you're oh, like yeah. steady, not even breathing. And so to just be able to give yourself a, the full range all throughout the belly, like the diaphragm and into the chest is so it's so like nourishing. And it really is, I think like life force, life force, life force yeah. with like all of the oxygen, like we're flowing, like we're moving. Like I yeah. love doing, I love being weird like that. And like my yeah. cells are awakening, but you can feel it too. Yeah. Like I just to give people like kind of, um, I don't know, like a review or whatever. Cause I, I also am curious, like what people respond to you with a lot, but when we were doing the breath work, I guess it was probably like a, almost a month ago or whatever now, but I told you that my feet were like dancing, like my feet wanted to move so bad (laughs) somewhere throughout that session. And what did you tell me that, 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 that meant? So there's a few different things, right? So energy is going to leave out first through the lens. So when we're breathing and we're going into a really extensive breath work, the one that we did was about 35 minutes long. Our um, limbs can experience something called tetany, which is they kind of just tighten up and they want to, or they want to move. And there's kind of this weird energetic sensation because energy is literally moving in and out through the body. Our breath is our life force, right? Back to your point. A lot of people will find themselves throughout the day holding their breath. They're like, oh my God, how long have I been holding my freaking breath, right? Yeah. You're cutting off your life force. You're literally cutting off your connection. You're literally cutting off the momentum for energy to move in the body. And in that moment, I invite you to take five deep breaths. Like do something to bring your body back in because you've literally been depriving it of life. But when we get into these, into these longer breath works, yeah, energy that's going to want to move and liberate, we've got, we have to create a pathway for them somehow. Right. So a lot of times they'll go up through the throat chakra and out through the crown. Mm-hmm. So you'll feel a little bit lightheaded and then it'll leave out the limbs. And that's beautiful. That means it's working, right? We want energy to move. I mean, we're already holding the energy. So many people are like, I'm terrified of breath work because I don't know what's going to come up and I don't know if I can handle it. I'm like, baby girl, you are already holding it all day, every day. So you're already handling it. 
but do you want to handle it this way or that way? Right. Like, do you want to have a quick 30 minute cry and allow yourself to move and liberate and feel completely different? Or do you want to walk with it for 30 years? Like we're already holding these things, these thoughts and traumas, like we're acting like these are some foreign object that's going to hit us in the head and we're not going to know what to do with it. We (laughs) are already surviving with this baggage. We already carry 50 pounds. Surviving is the key word. Right. (laughs) So like we might as well allow ourselves the space and time to thrive. That's just it's just what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you experience tetany, which is beautiful because when it leaves out through the feet too, that's sometimes an indicator that you need more grounding. Like you're, that's what you told I, me. Yeah. I won't go into too much space, but you're a really spacious energy. So the feet kind of can indicate like, let's ground you down. Like if there's areas <laughs> in your life where you're not creating space to become still can connect with nature, kind of find that alchemy. Yeah. Then yeah. that's a really good indicator that there's some, there's some potential for space to be created there. Yeah, that's actually probably right on because I'm generally like, a, you know, like here, my sister is, yeah. uh, we um, talk about this a lot because our energies sort of balance each other out where she is like, yeah. <clears throat> kind of like logical next step, next step. And she's like, I always admire that you can like dream big and you're like up here and somebody could be like, oh, like that's kind of, uh, you know, I can, mm-hmm. and I'm like, no, you're right. I do do that. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, ah. <laughs> it's beautiful. And it's like, it's, it's a double sword, right? Because in its distortion, we can leave the body and we can be stuck in a daydream all day without actually driving the needle forward and being accepting of our present day. hundred percent. And (laughs) like, it's a really beautiful space to be like out of this 3d narrative that we live in. And we're so analytical and we just stay with like our shields up all day, like looking at the traffic, looking at the laundry, looking at this, this, this. So being spacious really does allow you to like tune into the field, tune into the bigness of this world, the abundance that's around us. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm very spacey and I love it because I'm like, Oh, I can just like feel the goodness. Yeah. And if I get too lost in that, and I don't find my ground, right. I can float away. And then my yeah. whole life is lived in this beautiful romantic visual yeah. that, that I'm not really living out in a day to day. So yeah. just like everything, there's, te- there's four elements, there's fire, earth, water, flow, and air. So depending on your makeup, you're going to have a different combination of two or three of these that really drive and lead. And then it, the, the work is to get to know that fourth right? Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. if I don't have a whole lot of ember, fire, passion, masculine, healthy energy in my system, which I don't, I have a lot of flow. I'm very feminine, (laughs) very spacey. I want to hold and love everybody all day. I don't want to be told what to (laughs) do. I've had to really work on my fire, on my passion, on my, on my masculinity. And that's something that I get to work on. And then I've been working on it and now I have a schedule in place and I have these beautiful masculine structures throughout my day because I know myself and without them, I won't succeed. Mm -hmm. So all that to say, like, just the more you know about yourself and the less that you meet that knowing with criticism, like, why am I this way? Why can't I just commit? Why am I so multidimensional? And why do I have 18 million tabs open? Just know how you work, know how you function. Yeah. And then invite in other ways to support you in how you function and to make you feel aligned, right? It's not about beating yourself up and trying to subtract and take away from this ebb and flow of who you are. It's about either adding or subtracting the right things that support you in you being you. So at the end of the day, we want you to be you. There's not one size fits all. And you can't buy this course of how you're going to make $10,000 and expect to make $10,000 because that's their process. That's not your process. Yes. You can't do that. Yeah. Yes. So personal experiences with that too. Yeah. I, I think one of the beautiful things about getting to know yourself is exactly what you just said is becoming aware of some of that. And then just meeting it with like, how can I work with this instead of Mm -hmm. trying to fight it so hard? Like, can I just accept Mm -hmm. and figure out how to work with myself? Cause I've done a lot of that too. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of fun. And I think about, you know, the masculine and a feminine as well. Like, how can I, you know, like, what can I do to just like move the needle forward? Like just like one little thing before I go off into dreamland or whatever, yeah. Or, yeah. or get distracted or whatever it is, or like go meditate because I'm like, I really want three hours just to do whatever the hell I want today. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love that. I mean, that's what happens when you get to create your own schedule. You get that freedom. <laughs> Totally. And well, yeah. with mentors and coaches and authority too, we want the people that are going to meet our systems where our systems are at and expand and emphasize on our strengths and our ways. Like if, if a coach comes in with their agenda and their teaching and promptings and tries to embed that in you, it's never going to work, right? The coach can put their ego aside to show up for you and your system and your body and learn your system specifically. So then we can regulate that 
and learn how to work from there. So it's not going to be all this hard work. You're not going to have to do these things that you don't want to do. You're in rhythm, you're in coherence with your mind and your body. And that's important too. Yeah. That's, I think it's a really important message for anyone that is looking into coaching really for any reason, get to know who you're wanting to work with. Um, and their style, because I've, I've definitely done the, the opposite. Well, I've kind of done both, but I've definitely done the opposite in a very big way. And, and then realized like what a, what a box that I was in, uh, mm -hmm. and that it was like, wow, that and it, I was, there was so much resistance and, and I'm not, I mean, I've looked at it a million different ways, but in the end, it was like, that just wasn't, it just wasn't for me. It wasn't the way that I want to operate, but I definitely felt like, bad. I felt bad for it. And mm -hmm. like, you know, I just wasn't cool enough, good enough. Like, wasn't ever going to be, you know, like, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. oh my gosh. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I also think that I mentioned people being able to make their own schedules, but I think that we can find ways. Um, and Brittley has given you very simple ways to reconnect throughout the day that don't take a ton of time. We did that in like literally a minute before we, mm -hmm. before we hopped on to record, I knew that I was in like buzzy energy, which is kind of typical if I'm going to do a podcast, but it was like buzzy energy for different reasons. Like there was just a lot going on. And she was like, do you want to drop into breath work? And I'm like, you know, I do. <laughs> I and it, and it's, and it's lovely how quick it can just change. Um, if you're, if you're open to it, you know, mm -hmm. not a lot's going to happen if you're resisting it. That's, <laughs> that's in my big spiel lately, lately is your in one of two postures, you're in resistance or receptivity. So you get to pick, you get to choose. You're either receptive and open to your desires and then allow yourself to have them or you're resisting yourself and you're blocking and living in limitation and unwilling to grow and make yourself uncomfortable and you get to choose. No one's gonna push it on you. No one's going to force you into either direction, but I, in every moment you get to pick where you stand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right, mic drop, bye. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're working with, uh, tell me who you kind of typically work with and what is that, what does that look like with, mm -hmm. with pairing the different modalities that you do use? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Beautiful question. I love working with people who have started on their journey in some capacity. That doesn't mean you have to let me emphasize. Um, a lot of my clients have done the cognitive behavioral therapy, right? They've gained a lot of awareness. They've done a lot of the inner work, but they don't know what to do with it. And they don't have the roadmap to then integrate it and start to live a new life, to start to create a new reality and to be a, a new human, to live a life that feels as good as it looks. So that's where I help them take all this awareness. And if they don't have the awareness, that's beautiful too. I work with those clients to bring up into the conscious mind from the subconscious mind, which drives 95% of our life, what you are operating from what lies and stories and truths that you are living in that show up in your day to day and that same partner with the new face over and over and over and that same job and that same situation. Why are we, why are we creating out the same narratives over and over and over, right? We really spend some time understanding our why, understanding our system. And then from there we can do something about it. And that's when I bring in the somatic tools to integrate the new awarenesses that we want to pick and choose and the new truths and the new stories and the new ways of being that we are committed to evolving into transcending in through this life. So I work with both men and women in my one-on-one -on -one container to do that. Mm -hmm. We go deep dive into you, your system. What are your limitations, your blocks, your stories? What is holding you back? What is your pain? What is it causing you? How is it showing up? And then we liberate it. Yeah. We get, mm -hmm. get to the nitty gritty. One of my favorite quotes of all time is until we make the subconscious conscious, it'll rule our life and we'll call it fate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that one too. <laughs> and so here we are becoming the active operators of our life, bringing from the subconscious into the conscious awareness that in which we desire to change. And then we're moving from there. Um, so that's my somatic coaching program and I love it. And I love everybody in there. And it's, it's really kind of a one size fits all. I meet you where you're at. I also offer breathwork sessions, one-on-one -on -one transformational breathwork sessions. I offer one-on-one -on -one sessions and then I also offer a package of four because I find that four is really the number in which we can really start to shift things. Mm -hmm. I have some testimonials on my website, but one including an addiction that was broken, mm -hmm. um, a pain in the shoulder from baseball that dissipated. Mm -hmm. So a lot of really, really beautiful cool. physical things that are changing and transforming just in using your breath and being guided in that way. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and then I have group containers and things like that, that are coming up and launching. We can touch on, but 
Yeah. There's multiple ways to work with me. <laughs> I love that. Well, that was going to be my question was like, if people are interested in looking to work with you for breath work separately, but you have that. So that's amazing. Yeah. Um, and since I know a little bit about why you moved back to Austin, well, I don't really know about, it's not really the, the why, but like there was, you said that you left behind a relationship mm-hmm. and when you told me that and like you were, that you were choosing to, you know, and you're choosing to leave and and come back to, to Austin. I think that that is just, I don't want to like brave, maybe not the right word, but it kind of, but it is, it really is because it's so easy to just stay if it's good, you know, if it's good enough, it's, it's easy Mm -hmm. to stay, but there was something that was drawing you back to Austin. There was something that was pulling you back there. And if for someone who might be going through like a similar type of transition or facing like what they feel like, you know, something needs to change. What, what would you have to say to that, to that person? Oh, I love this question. And I just, first and foremost, if it's you, if you're listening and you're like me, I want to honor you. It's not an easy space to be in when your intuition is coming online, right? The universal whisper, then it'll knock and then it'll throw something at you. And when it throws something at you by that time, there's usually been a lot of resistance and it's something that's really hard. So I just want to honor you in the season that you're in and also remind you again that confidence comes after courage. Liberation comes after overcoming the fear, right? Comfort comes after getting through the discomfort. So first we must get uncomfortable. We have to we have to lean in. And the truth is, babe, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. if you're waiting for permission or clarification, you know, you know exactly what you need to do. And all of those things that prevent you from doing that are these fears and stories that you're telling yourself. And I always tell my clients, like, walk me through the worst case scenario. Just go for it. You are, you've already gone there. You replay it every day. Mm-hmm. Like, let's just name it. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh my God, I break up with him. And then he moves on. And then he finds someone else. And then I'm alone for my entire freaking life. And then I'm broke. And then I end up on the streets. I'm like, beautiful. Just like, let's go there. Right. We, <laughs> we go there and then we liberate it. We're like, well, has that ever happened? No. And would you still be okay? Yeah. And then I'm like, give me that worst case scenario. The one that you haven't entertained once because the, the worst case scenario you've played in your head about 90 million times. You literally said it in four seconds. Now give me the best case scenario and they'll freeze. I'll be like, I mean, I guess best case scenario, we break up and I move on to find a soulful love that's undeniable and unquestionable. My heart is on fire and we make kids and I'm like, oh, oh, there it is. Mm -hmm. There it is. Why can't we entertain that? Mm. Why can't we pray for the most benevolent outcome for everybody? And why can't we lean into the possibility rather than the problem and the, right? And so just know that you know, and when you trust your intuition and you take one step in good faith towards your knowing and your truth, the universe will support you and meet you and validate that decision. Letting mm-hmm. go of my puppy was so freaking hard. It was such a heartbreak, but I knew it was good. And on the other side was an underlying peace and relief that I couldn't have anticipated until I made the action. Mm-hmm. Right. And one of another, one of my favorite quotes that I live by is what misses you was never yours. Mm-hmm. And what's yours will never miss you. You can't fuck it up. You can't, you can't mess it up. Mm-hmm. So just take inspired action and in good integrity over and over and over and listen to your intuition when she speaks, don't override her and you will be left in alignment and embodiment and it will feel really good too. Mm -hmm. I love that. That was so beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Y'all just got coached. Come back and listen to that whenever you, (laughs) we just got a little pep talk. That might be your little clip it. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, there's several nuggets in here. Don't worry. I'm mental notes. (laughs) you're full of goodness and just full of like love. And I love that you have found this for yourself uh, and to be able to share that with other people. And it's, it's such a gift to us personally, but it's, it is a gift that we can give to others and and help them see that in themselves as well. And, and help people just, you know, change their lives. feel good in their lives. feel good in their bodies every day feel good in traffic, no matter how annoying it is, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, a kid torch. just deal with the day-to-day shit. <laughs> how lovely. You cultivated and created this entire space and you set the platform and the tone for me to come in and share and speak and, and, and le- you let this. And so I just want to reflect to you what an amazing leader you are and how big your energy is and how magnetic you are. And the women that are leaning in and listening and being guided by your love and light is, is, big and it's appreciated it's needed 
Thank you. I received that. Good. Sure. I received that for the rest of the day. Yes, and ma'am. tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, what a beautiful conversation. Um, I do want you to tell us about what you have going on. You have a group program. You said that was starting soon. I do. Yep. It's called Emerge. It's an eight week group program, a beautiful way to start entering in the space. If you're unsure, if you want to commit to the coaching, but you are in a season of stuckness, stagnancy. And if you're not, if you're in a space where you're like, I feel pretty good, but you're ready to kind of embody this, this entire version of you emerge literally means to step out and into view, right? Mm -hmm. So like the parts of you that are hiding in, in shadow and in shame and guilt, where we want to liberate those parts. We want to see the full expression of you, your authentic, embodied, beautiful, feminine energy. I want you to show it. I want it to feel free. I want it to move outside of you. I want you to become magnetic and feel all of the things. Mm -hmm. so that starts June 29th. There is six spots left and it's 50% off because it's a beta launch. So this, I always oh, do this. Yay, that's exciting. Launches. I always um, promote them at 50% off just to allow people to flood in and get testimonials and experience the energy. So it will never be this price ever, ever again. So I'm really excited about that. I wanted to make it really obtainable and available for everybody. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in that, you can go to divineyourlife.co slash emerge and, um, or head to my Instagram at Britley Ann and get more details on that. Send me a DM if you're interested, if you need information and I hope to see you there. Perfect. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to link that in the show notes. And then, um, I mean, I always say this, like I'm going to link it in the show notes, but I am a type of person who is when they are listening, I will literally go look people up right then. Mm -hmm. Um, so tell us where, so we've, we've got your Instagram and website, and then you also have a podcast. So just drop your podcast. Yeah. Tell us about Maybe that. Yeah. Divine Your Life is my podcast. Love it. It's in a little bit in transition, but there's some really, really amazing potent episodes that you can listen mm -hmm. back to catch up on when I'm ready to get back in consistency with that. But that's a really good way. I should up very vulnerably there. I don't edit anything out. It's really real raw and mm -hmm. a good way to get kind of a sense of who I am and what I'm about and mm -hmm. the kind of people of caliber that I want on my show. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, website, Instagram and Facebook, Britley Williams. You'll find me there. Does anyone on Facebook? No, I'm just kidding. I know. I'm, like, I'm totally Facebook. on Facebook. No, I'm totally I'm on space. Facebook. My MySpace is. <laughs> oh my, my Snapchat. gosh. <laughs> Snapchat. Are you on the, are you on the clock app too? Or like. Too yeah. <laughs> my hinge. No, I'm just kidding. I'm like, just let kidding. me, let me get your LinkedIn. I'd really, I'm actually like on a lot of I'm these. Dying. So I can't even make fun. <laughs> You're like, I'm actually guilty. Oh, I'm totally them. everywhere. It's just where I'm, where am I actually active? You know? <laughs> yeah. Good question. <laughs> oh All my right, gosh. Mama, well, thank you thank so much. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, I was, I'm going to probably talk about this in the intro, but I'm just going to touch on it here. What I was um, introduced to you by Paige, who's somebody that I met via the Instas and she's in California pointed me to you. And then we talked like pretty like in the next week or so, we were just instantly like, we should just be recording this now. So I'm so glad that we got a chance to finally have our conversation and thank you so much for all the wisdom and like golden nuggets that you shared today. And I hope that it has hit people in the right spot. Like go, go find breath work, wherever you find it, but like go connect with Brittany and just dive in because I've been, I'm one of those people that's kind of like, I was kind of like this with meditation too, where I would only use it like if I was feeling bad. <laughs> so like, but when I just give it a chance, I'm just like, I'm so much better at that now these days, so much more open to it as a regular occurrence in my life as part of my overall like health plan for myself. And I just really, I enjoy it. And I know it has um, so many benefits, uh, just obviously you've already mentioned them. So I'm so glad that you came on today. Well, thanks, love. And you're such an easy friend and such an easy woman to love and oh. to show up for and support. And are you sure about that? I'm just kidding. I, I, I shouldn't it. deflect. I like to deflect. With <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm divorced. So I don't know about that. Is usually what does why. that mean? You're no, you're liberated. Right? You're <laughs> single. You're living your That's best actually life. That's how I, I feel it. about it. <laughs> Yeah. You're doing amazing. You're doing amazing. Oh, I love it. Well, thank you so much. And I will talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks. So. Thank you for tuning into the beauty pro wellness podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, hit subscribe. So you don't miss out on new episodes, leave a review and share with your friends in the beauty industry. Beauty pro wellness podcast is produced and crafted by wonder podcast productions.